Hello, welcome to chapter 18, the last recording. Uh, it's VAT. VAT, what is VAT? Well, VAT is the tax on supplies of goods and services. It is ultimately borne by the final customer because what happens is individuals who aren't tax registered can't recover the VAT they've paid on the last supply. All the way through the chain you have people who are VAT registered and they probably have output VAT sales versus input VAT on purchases and they offset one against the other and pay the difference. So VAT is quite a nice system from a government point of view in that everyone becomes a collector of taxes. When does VAT occur? Well, you have to be a taxable person making a taxable supply. What is a taxable person? Well, it can be an individual or a company that is or should be registered for VAT. A taxable supply is sales and purchases of goods or services. So it's not just goods and it's not just services, which are not of that exempt, and we'll come to those, or outside the scope, and we'll look at those shortly. Now the jargon you must become familiar with, input VAT is the VAT on purchases of goods or services. So when you buy purchases, you are buying something into your business, that's input VAT. When you have output VAT, a taxable person charges output VAT on their sale, so something goes out of the business, so it's output VAT. The end of each tax period, which is normally a three month period, the input and output VAT is netted off and the excess of output VAT is paid to HMRC. Or if you have an excess of input VAT, then it's recovered from HMRC. You get money back. And that's very important for cash flow that that is done on a timely basis. In the UK, the VAT standard rate is 17.5% up to 3rd of January 2011. It is now running at 20% and has been from all through last year. Most goods and services are standard rated. There however are some other rates. The zero rated supply, which is 0%. The important thing about zero rated is although output VAT is zero, input VAT equals 17.5, you can still recover that 17.5 VAT, which is really important. So if you're selling children's clothing, books and newspapers, non-luxury food, you're selling them with 0%. So you recover all your 17.5% cost on your purchases. Exempt supplies, there is no VAT charge. So you think to yourself, well, okay, output equals zero, input equals 17.5. What's the difference? The difference is you can't recover that 17.5. It's a, just another overhead into your profit and loss. So it's very, very important that you don't see the difference between exempt supplies, even though the mathematically they're both 0% what they are very different for VAT and cost wise purposes. VAT registration requirements now you don't have to be registered for VAT unless your tax or supplies over the previous 12 months are going to have exceeded the registration limit which currently is 73,000. You must notify within 30 days of the end of the month in which the registration limit exceeded if you don't, there'll be penalties and interest for getting for being late. You must then register, and you must then become part of the system of input and output VAT, accounting for, etc. The other time is when you should um, register is when your tax applies over the next 30 days, so looking forward this time. That's looking forward, that was looking back, are anticipated to exceed the registration limit, again 73,000. You must inform prior to the end of the 30 days. Registration begins at the start of the 30 days. 
Voluntary registration is possible, so you don't have to be compulsory. It can be voluntary. Why would you do this? Well, it means you can recover inputs back, as well as providing an impression of, of a business being bigger than it really is. Clearly, if you're charging VAT and your turnover is only 40,000, if you add VAT, you're gonna, everyone's going to think your turnover must be at least 73,000. The other advantage is, is well, obviously, you recover your input back. As long as your customers are VAT registered, then there's no difference for them. They will be able to recover the VAT you charge. But if they are not VAT registered, it's a big situation for you as to whether you do charge VAT because obviously the customer will immediately have to pay 20% more. So something that cost £100 will now cost £120. They might not want to do that and they'll go elsewhere. So it's a big decision to VAT register when it's voluntary. There's also the fact You've got to deal with the administration and like any country it's not straightforward and there are risks of um, getting it wrong and getting VAT penalties and interest can come your way. Now importantly however input VATs on goods acquired for businesses purposes can be recovered if they are still within your stock at the date of registration so you can actually have something called pre-registration expenses um, which is quite useful because sometimes you know you take a while to get into business get started so any VAT on services provided in the six months prior to registration can also be recovered which is quite useful to know. Now importantly for the, for the F6 paper something called tax point what is the tax point? Well the tax point is the official date of supply for VAT purposes it's usually taken to be when the invoice is made but there are um, alternatives. For goods, the basic tax point is when the goods are made available to the customers so the customer can have use of them. For services however, the basic tax point is when the service is performed. The basic tax point is amended however in the following situations. Before the ta basic tax point, if an invoice is issued or payment received, then this becomes the tax point. Okay. If after the basic tax point an invoice is issued within 14 days of the basic tax point then the date of the invoice becomes the tax point. So things can change um, from the basic tax point. Why is this important? Well it's all about timing. You've got to be careful with your three month accounting period. You know, does something fall in here or does it fall into here in terms of your dates? And that's why it's important is when do things when do invoices fall due? Now in this world of troubled times where we aren't getting paid, what happens if you get if you don't get paid? Can you recover your VAT? The answer is yes, but just got to be careful when. In order to qualify for bad debt relief, the debt must be at least six months old and you must have written it off in your seller's account. So in other words, you must, must have made an attempt to provide for it in your, in your balance sheet because obviously you've got the debtor there. So for something where you sold something for £100 times 20% VAT equals £20 of output that you've paid over to the government, it's gone to HMRC, but you've not been paid for the 120. So you're out of pocket. So what you must do to get that 20 pounds back is make a provision in your accounts for the 100. And after six months, you can just put this through your VAT return and recover the 20 pounds and get your money back. And that's how you get VAT back on bad debts. Okay, that was a final video recording uh, doing VAT. Hope this express notes have been a useful synopsis of the syllabus. It's not meant to cover everything and some things are clearly more difficult than others and you need to work through the detailed notes and course recordings to get a full understanding. But uh, good luck and the end of P6, uh, F6 even. Take care. Bye bye.